Reducing fuel poverty and meeting national carbon reduction standards are challenging objectives for local government. One solution is setting up community heat and power schemes, but entering the energy sector brings with it formidable risks. UX Energy has more than 20 years' experience in energy procurement and risk management. And as Robin Ross reports, in places like Aberdeen, they're generating more than just heat. Aberdeen, the granite city. According to the Met Office, on average, Aberdeen is the coldest city in the UK, which means it's important that people can afford to heat their homes. Which is why in 2002, Aberdeen Council established Aberdeen Heat and Power, an independent not-for-profit company. Its aim is to cut fuel poverty in the city's multi-storey blocks. Of the multi-storey blocks of flats in Aberdeen, which there are 59 blocks, uh, were heated uh, electrically. It was found that the majority of people living in these blocks were, were actually living in fuel poverty. To help people pay their bills, the company installed a district heating system to supply hot water and heat to the tower blocks and some public buildings. So far, there are four local generators providing heat and hot water to 33 blocks. Residents have individual control over the amount of energy they use. Long gone are the expensive storage heaters that cost up to £25 a week. For those that are connected to the district heating, uh, we charge a, a set fixed rate of £10.54 a week and anybody even on the lowest level of income st can still afford to adequately heat their homes. Traditional power stations waste heat when producing electricity. These local generators capture the heat and funnel it into a network of underground pipes that heat up the buildings, leading to lower carbon emissions and fuel consumption. The system produces electricity that is sold to the grid. 75% of their costs are purchasing gas and a third of their income is selling electricity. So to help get the best deals, Aberdeen Heat and Power has been working with UX Energy Services. It helps local authorities to buy, sell and negotiate in the energy market. What we've done for Aberdeen Heat and Power is establish a contractual structure which gives them um, certainty of the gas price, as the fuel for the generation units, certainty of the price that they will receive for the output of the generation units, those deals being in place for um, an initial three year term and by having that in place that allows them to ultimately manage and control the risk um, associated with their operations. So UX have helped us through that process, they've set up framework agreements, many competitions, we can then go out and, and get the best price that we need. You're always looking for something called a positive spark spread, which means that what you're paying for your gas is lower than what you're getting for your electricity. And you get that? And we've consistently had that by working through UX. The government has dedicated a fund to encourage more district heating networks. It would like to see it rise from 2% to 40% by 2050. Well, UX Energy Services is uh, it's a wholly independent consultancy. So from that standpoint, we speak to all of the um, main suppliers in the industry on behalf of our clients. Um, by being independent, we don't have any particular allegiance one way or another to a particular supplier. In Denmark, it's full steam ahead. District heating networks are used in 63% of households. We're behind here, but things are slowly changing. In Aberdeen, 200 new council houses are being built and the pipes are being laid to connect them to the network but there are strict regulations. As a public sector entity, Aberdeen Heat and Power has to undertake its procurement in line with the relevant regulations. UX worked with the group to make sure that that was indeed the case and all the relevant compliance structures and requirements were met. Janice is retired from Aberdeen Heat and Power, but is still a volunteer. We haven't got everybody in Maltese out of fuel poverty yet. Not everybody is connected. I'll, I'll retire for a second time when we've got all 59 Maltese connected. <laughs>